Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live, and go in the way of understanding. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we read again in in Proverbs, reading chapter 9, verses 1 to 6, where wisdom is again presented as an alternative to the way of life, that is, the way of death, foolishness and death. For God has shown us the way that we should live, and it is plain and spelt out carefully and demonstrated abundantly in the scriptures what this way is. But there is always a choice for us to make. We can heed wisdom, the wisdom of God, the maker's instructions as it were, or we can ignore them and try and work out our own way. Now the logic of following the way of wisdom, the way of God, is that God has planned the system of life from before the creation of the world. Wisdom is not something that comes from within us. It is something that comes from God. And we must learn it and seek understanding and knowledge to follow it. But the way of wisdom is not presented to us as being something that requires great intellect, a postgraduate degree. For our verses here, says, Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. The wisdom of the world often emphasises intellect and people of great knowledge. We give honour to those who have academic degrees and, and make pronouncements based on their own knowledge and understanding. But when that knowledge and understanding contradicts the Bible, who will we believe? Will we believe the teacher who says scientists have shown the world is billions of years old? Or will we receive the simple statement of Scripture that about 6,000 years ago, God brought it all into being? Because consequent on that is the fact that God had a plan from before the creation of the world. Wisdom, the wisdom of God, existed before the world came. And God in his wisdom made this world. God in his wisdom has set before us two paths to follow And it is our responsibility to choose which path we will go. And so the scripture says, why will you die? Choose life. Choose today who you will serve. And so, for example, on the issue of creation, a creationist does not deny the facts, the fossils and geology and geography of the earth and those things that we can observe, but interprets them differently, interprets them on the basis of the record of scripture. The fossils are evidence of the great flood that deluged the whole earth and buried very many creatures in in what are now sedimentary rocks around the world. And Jesus calls out, follow me. Wisdom calls out, whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Because if you don't forsake foolishness, then you will die. The closing verses of verse 8 were, Whoever sins against me, that's against wisdom, wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. When you choose to go contrary to the way of God, then you are hurting yourself, because consequences flow from actions. We have a similar exhortation in the words of the Lord Jesus. In Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7, he gives us an exhortation of how we should live. Building on the instruction that came in the law of Moses, showing that it is not just the action, but more importantly, it is the attitude of the heart that is critical. 
and without going through the detail of his instruction there, he does say, everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. For Jesus is following up on the words that the psalmist said, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. And so the fool does not take heed to the ways of God and he walks in the way of destruction. Now, every man faces the buffetings of life. There are things that happen in our lives which challenge our thinking and our experience. Indeed, our life is full of choices. Every day we get up, we choose what we will do, where we will go. And every choice that we make has consequences. So, the simple can be satisfied with the circumstances of their life, and pursue righteousness, understanding and knowledge. But in the context of recognising that God has defined what wisdom is, there are people today who say that morality is just a consensus of society, which is completely contrary to the teaching of the Bible, which says that morality is the character of God. It is God who is good. It is God who is true. It is God who is merciful. It is God who is gracious. It is God who is patient. It is God who forgives. And it is God who judges. And so our society has all of those elements in it. But the definition of them comes from God. It's not for us to redefine what is good and what is bad. For what is good leads to life. What is bad leads to death and destruction. It applies at a personal level. It applies at a society level. And so Jesus challenges us to hear these words of mine and do them. And then when the wind and the rain and the storms of life buffet, our house, our life will not collapse around us. As Paul summarised it, No temptation or trial or difficulty has confronted you, but such as is common to men. And God will, with that temptation, provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. In other words, there is always a godly response to make to a situation. Now, wisdom coming to us is spoken of as a meal in our reading from Proverbs 9. She has built a house... She has hewn out seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest place of the cities, Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine that I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. This is a banquet that is prepared for us, that we are invited to participate in. And Jesus frequently used that picture. The bread and the wine reminds us of the Last Supper, when Jesus urged his disciples to do this in remembrance of me. For this bread is my body that is given for you. This cup is my blood that is shed for you. It is a new covenant in my blood for the remission of sin, not the old covenant which concerned the land of Israel and the sacrifice of animals, but the new covenant which concerned the Spirit of God coming to dwell in our lives, when we accept that Jesus is the sacrifice that makes atonement for our sin. And that's the promise that we have in the New Testament, that God will actually come and share in our lives. Choose life. Turn away from foolishness and take heed to the word of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.